All right, so we finished three out of these six special weapons in Destiny. We're going to move on to the second half and we're going to start with grenade launchers, which was the next most popular voted option out of all the special weapons left to tier. So first, like we've talked about previously, let's go over what do grenade launchers do in endgame PV? What makes them different from shotgun snipers, etc, etc? And, uh, you know, this is a fairly obvious answer because grenade launchers are obviously very different from shotguns, but let's go over it anyways. Uh, in my view, Grenade launchers are kind of threefold when it comes to what they do in endgame PvE. Number one, they do good splash ad clear in the form of waveframes and stuff like chain reaction salvo, extremely ammo efficient for that. Uh, number two, they serve a kind of utility role in the form of disorienting GLs, chill clip GLs, stuff where you're not necessarily just outright killing ads, but maybe freezing them or leaving them blind for a bit while you go and do something else or pass on through. And finally, number three, we have, of course, damage. Of course, everything's got to be about damage. There is, of course, DPS swap GLs like Empty Vessel and Wilderflight, which, of course, we're going to be talking about and ranking slash tiering uh, in the next section of the video. So number one, again, end game function. That is what GLs do. And let's move on to section two, which is going to be scoring. So how are we going to score GLs? Well, scoring GLs is, you know, kind of middle ground when it comes to complexity. So let's just get right into archetype. So there's three archetypes of special GLs that are in Destiny 2 right now. Number one, we have lightweights. Lightweights are your kind of classic, you know, average grenade launcher. When you think of a grenade launcher, what does it do? You shoot it at an ad. It's got relatively small blast radius compared to something like a rocket, and it does a small explosion on direct impact. Uh, then, of course, we have waveframes. Waveframes are completely game changing when it comes to ad clear. They do normal grenade launcher damage, but they do it in a straight line which is excellent in Destiny because a lot of stuff in Destiny spawns in doors and in other linear pathways. So waveframes are excellent for ad clear. And then of course we have Double Fire, uh, which is a new frame that came out with the Spire the Watcher dungeon and Wilderflight, uh, Wilderflight being the first Double Fire GL. This thing does essentially the same job as a lightweight GL without the lightweight bonus, except for it shoots two projectiles and does 30% more damage per shot, uh, which is, you know, awesome because it's, there's rarely ever two archetypes in the game where one just does 30% more for no reason and has no other changes besides that there's no trade-off really for using Wilderflight compared to a regular lightweight GL. So of course that is going to be some bonus points. In terms of scoring, again I decided waveframes and uh, double fires are no doubt going to be stronger than lightweights. So they're both going to get one point while lightweights sit with zero as kind of the base value for uh, GL archetypes. Next up, we have Affinity. Affinity, I was a lot more picky with GLs compared to regular old shotguns and snipers because GLs are only used for swap DPS, one third of their rolls. The other two are utility, and then your surges don't really matter for utility purposes or ad clear. So in terms of surges, I really only gave certain solar GLs uh, the benefit of some points, and uh, they really only went to Empty Vessel because it is the only solar GL used for DPS out of all of the ones available right now to pair with Apex Predator, and even then it's not even necessarily the best option, so I just gave it a free point for doing that. Besides that, Kinetic Weapons of course did get a uh, free point as well because they all do 15% more than the Stasis Weapons in their slot, so that I think is deserving of uh, an extra point regardless of whether you're being used for utility, for damage, or for ad clear. Uh, next up we have perks. Now perks I've split into four sections. We have ammo, reload, utility, damage. I'm sure you're used to these if you watched the previous videos. But in terms of ammo, ammo perks are not that important on GLs because they're so ammo efficient to begin with. You're rarely going to be running out of grenade launcher ammo if you're using a grenade launcher properly. So I only decided to give perks like lead from gold and field prep half a point because you're often not even going to be using them to begin with. Next up, we have reload perks. Now, reload perks are very important for GLs because unlike other weapons, they have one in the mag. So as a result, uh, I gave Ambitious Assassin on waveframes a two because it's useful on waveframes because you're pretty much guaranteed to get a kill if you're using them correctly. Uh, Ambitious Assassin on damage type weapons, so like double fires, and on lightweights, uh, I decided to give zero points because you're almost never going to be looking to do like a kill reload with those. Um, for slide shot on ignition code, I decided to give it two points because it's such a fundamentally gameplay loop changing perk, uh, which allows you to shoot three weapons per slide, uh, which is not three weapons, three shots per slide, 
which is absolutely insane for a blinding GL. So again, I had to give it two points. And then finally, auto loading holster on DPS GLs. I had to give that two points because it's literally a necessary perk to use a swap GL. You cannot use pretty much any other perk with a swap GL and have it work well. And finally, every other reload perk, stuff like Envious Assassin, I just gave it uh, one point. Same thing with Slideways because of its internal cooldown. I just gave that one point as well. Uh, moving on, we have utility perks. Now, utility perks, again, also important for wave frames uh, and GLs in general because they're just so versatile and good to begin with that they don't need much help. So any utility you can give them is a bonus. Uh, utility wise, I've given Chain Reaction and Chill Clip two points. Chill Clip because it has intrinsic kind of an overload effect and it slows enemies. Chain Reaction, I don't really think I need to explain that one. Unrelenting on wave frames, given that you're going to get multiple kills, I decided to that was that was worth a point. Uh, Danger Zone is getting zero points for now because it's kind of unclear as to how much that affects disorienting gels, if at all. Uh, Volt Shot I gave zero points to because, let's be real, Volt Shot is not very good on GLs. And uh, everything else, stuff like Demo, Wellspring, um, etc., those are all going to get one point each um, because I think they are all around the same weight besides Chain Reaction and the other weapons, uh, the other perks that I mentioned up till now. Uh, finally, we have damage perks. So damage perks on waveframes, they're actually not particularly interesting. Um, not waveframes, I should say GLs in general. They're not, they're not particularly interesting. On the swap GLs, you're basically only looking at Vorpal and Frenzy, which do the same thing, 15%. And on every other GL used for ad clear, stuff like Kill Clip, Rampage, One for All, all these scaling perks that have kind of requirements that waveframes can hit pretty easily. I would say they're all sort of equally weighted, so I didn't really give any of them particularly uh, higher points than any of the other ones because they don't stand out uh, as, as much as something like Chain Reaction. So that's Damage Perks covered. Finally, Competition, like we've said before, if a weapon is best in roll or slot, it gets two. If it's an alternative, it gets one. And if it's a non-starter, it gets zero. So with that being said, with that out of the way, uh, let's go ahead and talk about uh, tiering these uh, GLs into our tier list. So in alphabetical, in alphabetical order, let's start with Deafening Whisper. So Deafening Whisper is a Season of the, hand, uh, season of the Hunt Void Wayframe. And uh, this thing is pretty solid. You know, for how long ago it came out, uh, again, this thing's perk spread is pretty decent. Uh, it has Ambitious, Lead, Wellspring, Auto, and uh, it has Unrelenting as well. So this thing has a ton of perk combinations that are still relevant to this day. Ambitious is obviously great. Lead from Gold Auto, that is a, a perk combination that you're not going to see on pretty much any other waveframe. So this thing is pretty cool. This thing is pretty cool. Uh, it's, um, yeah, I mean, it doesn't have much competition, of course, given that uh, there's that, not that many gels in the game. But uh, it's still pretty cool. It's still pretty strong uh, for ad clear. Not obviously not as strong as something like Forbearance, but for the time it came out and for what it is now, it's, it's pretty good. We're going to put in the A tier. Okay, next up we have Empty Vessel. Empty Vessel is a solar lightweight GL from the Vanguard pool. Uh, this thing is pretty well known for its use in swap rotations with Apex Predator because it surge matches. It's got auto Vorpal Spike, which is a classic lightweight GL swap DPS combo. Now this thing does lose out in damage against Wilderflight even with surge matching, but that's not to say this thing is, you know, it's, uh, it's bargain bin or anything like that. Um, you can certainly also use this thing as a disorienting GL. It's a, you know, the best solar disorienting GL because it's the only one. Um, so if you want to use this thing in something like a GM with like auto demo, um, it's not a bad pick at all. So I'm going to go ahead and put this thing in the B tier. So it's pretty solid. It's nothing too special, but um, it, uh, it does two jobs pretty decently well. Um, so yeah, we're going to put it in the decent overall B tier. Next up, we have Explosive Personality, the solar waveframe from season of the risen and this thing has a bunch of pretty good perk combos as well i wouldn't say nearly as strong as deafening but the fact that you can pair this thing with something like ember of empyrean uh, is pretty solid so this thing has field prep it has genesis for goss uh, it has auto loading it has frenzy unrelenting uh, and one for all so this thing has a bunch of pretty decent perks um you know nothing crazy uh in terms of perk combinations but it's still pretty solid i have no problems putting this thing in the a tier just being you'll notice a lot of waveframes are going to be placed in the a tier just being a waveframe in general is um you know already enough to put most gl's you know feet in the door uh, and this thing doesn't have like bad perks either so this thing is a solid a tier okay moving on we got forbearance okay now forbearance I know um, most people regard this thing as one of the best special weapons in the game. It's a craftable arc wave from Vow, and um, this thing has Genesis again for breaking the shields in Goss and getting a free reload uh, if you're doing Goss speedruns. 
uh, I thought I'd mention that because, you know, speedruns are part of endgame PV. But besides that, most players are looking at ambitious chain reaction, uh, as well as possibly unrelenting, uh, possibly wellspring, and rampage. So this thing has a whole host of good perks. Most people are going to be using Ambition's Chain, and that's going to be enough for most people. And this thing also has Soul Drinker, which is an absolutely insane origin trait. Now, Soul Drinker procs off of hits before reloading, um, and I believe it also has uh, something, you know, it, it's, it also relates to the size of your magazine as well. So on a Waveframe, uh, this thing is absolutely insane because a Waveframe has a size mag, uh, a mag size of one. So this thing is, you know, absolutely insane with Soul Drinker. It's like pseudo unrelenting. Uh, it's absolutely insane, and we're gonna put this thing solidly in the S tier. It has, uh, you know, it has, it has, you know, it's it's like the perfect way from. It's like the perfect way from. What can I say? Okay, next up we have Harsh Language. Now, Harsh Language is a void waveframe that came out recently. It is a world drop. This thing is the only competitor to Deafening Whisper, and I would say on average, Deafening Whisper is probably a little bit better. Deafening Whisper has more generally applicable perks like Ambitious, Auto, uh, Wellspring um you know lead from gold it's got a lot of decent perks in that regard but this thing does have some void 3.0 synergy in the form of destabilizing rounds and repulsor i would say this weapon is one of the best repulsor brace weapons out there just because of its lethality how easy it is to get kills with this thing because it's a waveframe but besides that you know in terms of raw utility on most subclasses this thing doesn't have auto, doesn't have ambitious, doesn't have lead, doesn't have some of those classic waveframe perks that you're really looking for, but it is unique, it does carve out its own niche, and it is still a waveframe. So we're going to go ahead and put this thing in the A tier. I don't think it's nearly as high as some of the other waveframes on this list, but it still deserves to be in the A tier. Still definitely individually strong, just because of how good waveframes are in Destiny 2 at this current time. Okay, uh, next up we have Ignition Code. Ignition Code. Now, Ignition Code, I actually originally made this list, ranked this list, and accidentally put Ignition Code in the B tier, which was my primary reason for redoing this list. Uh, Ignition Code, uh, I rescored it because I realized I made a scoring error. I gave Slideshot one point instead of two. Um, I absolutely believe Slideshot deserves to have two points, just like something like Ambitious would have on a Wayframe. Slideshot absolutely fundamentally changes a Blinding GL's gameplay loop uh, of just being able to shoot literally you know, three times as many ads with a blinding jail uh, as you would be able to with a normal blinding jail on something like auto. So this thing is absolutely fantastic for that. Um, and it's not like it has bad perks besides Slideshot either. It has, uh, you know, Field Prep, it has Let From Gold, it has Vorpal Demo Frenzy. These are, this is a great tight perk pool and it's kinetic as well. So, you know, what's, well, what more can you ask for? It's basically the perfect blinding jail. It's the quintessential, uh, quintessential blinding jail. And it's been that way since year four. Um, the only reason I'm going to put in the A tier and not in something like the S tier is that Blinding GLs have kind of fallen by the wayside recently. Uh, they're not as useful as they used to be because the game is simply not as dangerous as it used to be. And of course, this thing is not very versatile. Uh, you can't really use it for DPS for the most part. It's not very good for DPS. Um, it's basically, it's only got its role as a Blinding GL. Uh, it's not for DPS and it's not for ad clear. So we're going to go ahead and put this thing, um, I'm going to put this thing solidly at the top of A tier. We're going to put this thing solidly at the top of A tier. Okay, next up we have Lingering Dread. Lingering Dread is a chill clip. It's a stasis chill clip uh, lightweight GL from the Duality Dungeon. Now, this thing is worth mentioning. It's a, it's a bit of a, a special blinding GL uh, compared to your average blinding GL because it has chill clip, like I said. And um, Chill Clip, the nice thing about this is a lot of people, they like Riptide because you can stun overloads using Chill Clip by just shooting one burst. Lingering Dread is the same, except for it has even more utility because this thing has disorienting GLs. So not only can you CC adds and not only can you blind adds and slow them, but you can also stun overload champions just by shooting a GL at them, which I think is a really, really underrated uh, thing about this GL. Not a lot of people talk about it. A lot of people know Riptide exists. Not a lot of people know that this thing has even more utility than Riptide does. So I'm going to put this thing solidly in the B tier. Uh, it's not anywhere near as game changing as Ignition Code was upon Impact and certainly not as long standing in its legacy. Uh, obviously not as many people have noticed Lingering Dread compared to Ignition Code, but it's still worth mentioning nonetheless. And it's still an absolutely solid blinding GL pick. All right, moving on, we have New Pacific Epitaph. This is probably, I think this is the latest GL to release on this list. Yes, it is and it's from the Ghost of the Deep Dungeon. Now, this thing is, of note, the only kinetic slot waveframe. So just by that virtue alone, this thing has brought a solid ad clear archetype 
to the slot, the kinetic slot, for the first time in Destiny 2 history. Uh, before this, Wither Horde was kind of like the go-to ammo efficient grenade launcher ad clear pick in this slot, but New Pacific Epitaph has managed to pull off being a solid replacement. So if you ever wanted to use something like 4th Horseman in a speedrun, but you still wanted to do good ad clear, now you can. You can run New Pacific Epitaph and 4th Horseman instead of running something like, you know, Wither Horde and, um, you know, a, a Legendary Shotgun instead. So this thing has definitely carved itself uh, a path in the meta, its own place. And uh, it's not like it has bad perks either, right? Like the stats aren't great, um, but this thing has pretty good perks, right? It has demo, which is on pretty much no other non-sunset waveframes. It has kill clip, which is rare to see on a, on, on a waveframe. And it's got unrelenting, it's got lead from gold, and it's got redirection. So it definitely has some absolutely solid perks as well. We're going to go ahead and put this thing solidly in the A tier. I'm going to put it probably somewhere right around here. Yeah, it's a solid A tier. Okay. Orwings Mall is up next. Orwings Mall. Orwings Mall, this thing is basically a base lightweight GL. There is nothing special about this thing. It is almost entirely designed around PvP. Um, and yeah, it has like field prep, auto, and demo. That's basically it. This thing is like if you wanted to do like swap GL DPS and you had no choice but to use anything but this thing, it's usable. But besides that, it's not really anything special. It's not solar. It has no damage perk. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's probably it's OK for blinding, I guess, if you need a blinding gel, it's void. But um, that's pretty much it. Yeah, this thing, we're going to put it in the D tier. There is like nothing much to say about this thing. It's like a bare bones stock, bare minimum. You can't even get this thing anymore. It's like, yeah, it, there's not really a reason to use this thing. OK, next up, we have Pardon Our Dust from Dares of Eternity. So Pardon Our Dust. Now this might be my blinding GL choice uh, when it comes to the four that are available in the game right now in the kinetic slot, but that's not to say that things, this thing is perfect. Um, in fact, the only thing this thing really has going for it is enhanced auto loading. Like every other perk in the first column is pretty bad, and every other perk in the second column besides like Vorpal and Demo, uh, not really notable either. So yeah, this thing, the only thing it has going for it is being craftable so that you can get enhanced auto loading, but most players are not going to care about enhanced auto loading to be honest with you. Um, and I only like it because I'm really coping. So this thing is like the bare minimum kinetic blinding gel, uh, you know, super, super bare bones. I'm going to go ahead and put in the C tier. It's usable, but um, there's definitely better options out there in general if you can get there, if you can get your hands on them. It's definitely the easiest one to get, though. <clears throat> OK, uh, we have five GLs left. Next, we're going to talk about Prodigal Return. So Prodigal Return is from Season of Defiance, also a craftable uh, arc lightweight GL. And um, this thing kind of flopped on release. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't really have anything particularly useful. It has field prep, like we mentioned, not great. Lead from gold, which is good. But again, no reload perk, right? It has um, no auto, um, no like ambitious chain like Salvo did like like a year ago. And uh, it has like demo and volt shot like volt shots not really useful on a GL. And demo is fine, but like a lead from gold demo, like blinding GL, that's pretty much the best you're going to get out of this thing, like enhanced lead from gold. So this thing's basically a non-starter. I mean, I'm going to put in the D tier. Um, if you ever need an arc blinding gel, that's pretty much the only niche this thing has. Um, yeah, that's all I really have to say about uh, about uh, Prodigal Return. Yeah, kind of a flop for how recent the weapon came out. Bungie usually does right by its GLs, So, you know, seeing Prodigal Return like this, not a great look. OK, next up we have Salvo. Salvager Salvo, this thing is an absolute legend when it comes to its legacy. Uh, this thing is easily the most powerful ritual weapon ever released in Destiny 2. We never got a ritual weapon that was anywhere near this strong. Uh, this thing was so good that remember, Deafening Whisper was a waveframe that was out at the time, and people chose to use a lightweight GL for ad clear over a waveframe because of how good this thing's perk combination was. Demo Chain, Ambitious Chain, and of course you have Demo Vorpal for damage as well. This thing was absolutely insane. It came with basically a 5 out of 5 baked in roll. Um, yeah, this thing has an insane legacy, but like I like to say, uh, you know, I don't really consider legacy as uh, a super important thing in uh, ranking these, uh, you know, uh, weapons in this tier list. In fact, it's not a consideration whatsoever, but I thought I'd take you, uh, you know, down a trip down a uh, memory lane. But uh, Salvo, regardless of that, is uh, it's still good for activities with circular ad spawns. Uh, the only problem is it's just it's just not a waveframe, uh, so it requires kills to do really significant splash damage. Um, but yeah, I mean, this thing is still usable for swap rotations involving grenades, uh, like in Vow, if you're using Verity's Brow. This thing is usable, right? It's got Demo, Vorpal, and Spike. It's definitely usable. 
Um, and it's got demo chain as well for just general content. So if you're looking for a GL and you don't have a solid waveframe, you don't have forbearance, you don't have like a, a good waveframe that you've grinded out, you can buy this thing from the kiosk and it'll it'll do pretty well. It'll do pretty well. I'm going to go ahead and put this thing in the B tier, right? I'm going to go ahead and put this thing in the B tier. It's still pretty solid. Okay. Uh, all right. Three GLs left. We have Malicious, Truth Teller, and Wilderflight. Let's start with Malicious. So Malicious Birthright. This thing is part of the Nightfall pool and this thing has Slideways Auto and it has Lead Auto which are two unique perks. You're not going to see them anywhere else on Kinetic GLs. Um, so yeah, it's that's kind of its claim to fame. Now, Slideways is a bit worse than Slideshot on Ignition Code because it does have an internal cooldown, but it's still useful, right? It allows you to get that, you know, shoot, slide, shoot, and then swap off. So that's pretty nice to have. Uh, you can still blind two ad groupings with this thing. And Auto Lead is pretty solid too. If I had Auto Lead on uh, Malicious, I'd probably use it in, G in, in GMs. You know, it's a useful role to have. Blinding GLs are already good enough with auto loading that, you know, the, the fourth perk can be used on something like lead and you'd get some benefit from it. So yeah, certainly not bad. Uh, I do like Malicious. I think it is deserving of a B tier placement. Yeah, I think it's a solid B tier. It's a decent blinding GL. Certainly no ignition code, but uh, certainly not bad either. Okay, uh, next up we have Truth Teller. Okay, Truth Teller. Truth Teller is a void lightweight GL. I mean, this thing is basically just, it's its just a repeat of Ore Wings. It has slightly better perks, right? It has like field auto demo. You know, you can do auto quick draw for swaps. But again, this thing is, uh, the only difference between this and, and, <laughs> and Ore Wings, to be honest, is like demo, I think. Um, so yeah, this thing is pretty much a non-starter. There's no reason to try to get this thing anymore. Uh, no reason to even like use this thing anymore. Empty Vessel exists, the Wilder Flight exists. They're just GLs that do this thing's job uh, much better for, um, yeah, for pretty much every role that it has. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and put in the D tier. Not much to say about this one. And finally, Wilder Flight. All right, so Wilder Flight, you know, you've probably heard me singing this thing's praises uh, in my DPS rotations videos whenever I talk about the damage meta. And whenever you hear me talking about Izzy GL Apex swapping with a GL, Wilder Flight is always the first word that comes out of my mouth, and it's for good reason. Wilder Flight, the double fire frame, if you aren't already aware, double fires do 30% more damage than lightweights per shot for literally zero cost. Literally zero cost. And how much does three surges do? That's right, 22%. Which means Wilder Flight versus Empty Vessel. Wilder Flight with no surges comes out on top against an Empty Vessel with three surges. That means you are literally better off using Izzy, Wilder Flight Apex, and three solar surges than you are using Izzy and a matching surge weapon in Empty Vessel. So... Double fires are very, very strong. Um, and that's not to say that this thing's perks are bad either. It's not like, uh, you know, New Pacific Epitaph where it's kind of the first of its kind. So the perks are not that great. This thing has absolutely solid perks for both swapping and for blinding, right? This thing has auto. It has demo. It has repulsor brace. It has lead from gold. It has frenzy and vorpal, right? This is an absolutely solid and tight perk pool. Uh, I have literally no complaints. If you wanted a lightweight GL kind of, you know, like a non-wayframe kind of GL, I mean, this is basically a lightweight, but it's it shoots too. If you wanted a lightweight GL, this is basically as good as it gets. If this thing was solar, it would be practically perfect. If it had something like Chain Reaction, it would be over. It would be over for GL. So again, auto lead blinding, absolutely great for stuff like GMs. And it has, um, you know, demo frenzy, auto frenzy for swapping. It has repulsor brace, you know, if you want to do like void 3.0 shit, like this thing is absolutely great. So, you know, no complaints with Wilder Flight. Uh, first of its kind, Trailblazer. I hope Bungie makes more good double fires in the future. Uh, kind of a direct example of power creep, to be honest, but, you know, not my game. <laughs> All right. Anyways, we're going to put this thing in the S tier. Uh, very, very solid. Um, this thing is very, very versatile. It does both of the lightweight frame jobs practically perfectly to a T. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this tier list. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this tier list. I'm pretty confident about this one because I tend to know a lot about grenade launchers being a, a speedrunner. Speedrunners love grenade launchers. And um, I don't think most endgame players would disagree that grenade launchers are the best special weapon type in Destiny 2 endgame content right now. So no doubt that on average, most of these weapons are going to be much stronger than the other weapons and the other tier lists. Uh, certainly something like the average sniper is going to be much worse than the average GL in terms of viability. So, um, you know, most of these weapons right down to the C tier are worth using in some capacity. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. If you have any questions, you know, feel free to let me know again in the comments. And um, the next video will probably be about traces. So um, I'll see you guys then. And um, yeah, thanks for thanks for sticking around.